Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Here's a nice little trivia to start the video. Did you know, the Matteo Diocce is a Greek for a vanity, and his exotic trait, styloresistics, means a treatment of pain or disease by inserting the tips of needles at specific points on the skin. This seems rather fitting for the exotic, since his whole design is to literally use arcane needles to pierce certain enemy types. And that today means one thing. We're going to be doing an endgame build based around the exotic and how you can make this build work in endgame even with low strength stats. So, by using this build, you can garner fast ability and prismatic energy over time, easily have your super up for anyone else, have flexibility with the kinetic weapons and fragments being used, and overall, be able to spam your melee without the need of mini perks or mods to solely rely on. So, let's start with the exotics being used. To start with the general aim and the exotic of the build, our aim is to make sure our prismatic energy is kept constantly filled up so we can use our melee as often as we like. We then need to make sure our weapons being used are viable for end game, but also can be switched without the effect in the build too much. For this, we will be using the Matteo Dixa and Outbreak Perfected. Now, I do apologise with how I'm pronouncing this, but please go ahead and correct me as I'm, I know 100% I am wrong with saying this. So, starting with the Machio Dioxa, with his exotic effect, Styloisis, it states Targets damaged by Arcane Needle emit a suspended detonation when defeated, and landing multiple Arcane Needles on the same target immediately triggers a larger, more powerful detonation. The Arcane Needles are also strong against Barrier Champions. As mentioned earlier, the exotic relies on the user to use their strand melee to activate its effect and suspend targets to refill your melee charge again. You can use Monte Carlo or a weapon with Puglis to help, but quite honestly, these won't need to ever be required since the generation of melee energy is very, very easy with what we are currently running. Plus, making sure your super and prismatic form are both available is the key to the build surviving for longer. Our second exotic is Outbreak Perfected, with its exotic effect, the Corruption Spreads, which states The weapon creates Seether Nanite Swarms on rapid hits and precision kills. The following is a great endgame weapon to use this season with thanks to its ability to pierce barrier champ shields, but also its constant effect of applying Seether Nanite onto targets continuously makes it a great ad clear and boss clear weapon that everyone should have. However, having bad juju for a super regen effect, or no time to explain for its additional damage, is also good choices to pick if you don't want to use Outbreak instead. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. A Feed the Void, where defeating targets with any abilities will activate Devour. Helion, where activating your class ability will produce a Solar Mortar that will lull flame projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. Facet of Dawn, where hitting a target with powered melee hits makes you Radiant. Facet of Solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emit a severing burst from the target. Facet of Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grants you and nearby allies bonus transcendence energy. A facet of balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And facet of dominance, where your void grenades weaken targets. And your arc grenade jolt targets. If focusing on the uses of endgame survival at best, the following fragments are the best to pick from the given lineup we have chosen from. As we will be using our Kinetic Primary a lot, it makes a lot of sense to have Basset of Grace and Solitude together so we can quickly regen our prismatic form, but also debuff enemies along the way. This goes the same when using Facet of Dawn for the damage buff we can constantly proc, and the Facet of Balance, which will of course keep our abilities afloat as long as we use them accordingly. Lastly, Dominus is a suitable pick if you use grenades with a build, as not only can it draw additional targets nearby, which can be helpful in small areas, we can also stun overloads quite easily, which has been a blessing to use when using the final boss room for the Glassway GM Strike. For the modern stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with strength also playing a part. Although strength is the main focus of the build for the high usage of arcane needles being used, you don't need to have the stat fully maxed out, as long as you follow a few steps beforehand. Resilience, we have our at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devourer will be enough to increase the potential of the user. You can add a Harmonic Resistance mod to help against elemental damage you may face, 
or you can add on the faster protection fragment if you can't reach max stat, but that should be it. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via storm grenades. As mentioned before, storm grenades are good for stunning overload champs on a moment's notice, and also jolting those nearby them as well. If you feel this is not ideal for you, then you can of course switch to void grenades instead for their weakened effect. Naturally, this stat won't need a lot of requirements to keep it going since Devourer will help along the way. With this being the case, I then advise you to use the following that benefit all of our stats in one instead. Having Impact Induction times 2 for a 17% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer for a 12% mini buff, although times 2 is also fine to half, Outreach for a 12% mini buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable enough for the build. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Connect Siphon for creating orbs of power via connected weapons. Charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. Kinetic weapon surge times 2 for a 17% kinetic weapon buff. Ashes to assets for a super energy regen via grenades. And lastly, heavy finder, reserves, and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. So as we have covered our exotic primary, I will then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits to the build. Secondary, I have the Indeed Kindness side on with Adagio and Beacon Rounds. A great and handy weapon in use for the season champs, the following is very powerful to use against major mini bosses with how strong you can get once Adagio is active. Although the Call is another great rocket pistol to use, that is solely locked to the primary selection slot, so your options here are to use a similar weapon, like shown, or go more with a weapon that best fits your playstyle. Heavy, we have the Briar's Contempt with Reconstruction and Power Cusual Affinity. A powerful weapon that works really well against bosses and champs when I get my Power Cusual Affinity perk active and going. One thing I will mention though is that since this is not behind the raid, I would advise you to use the Taipan 4 FR as an alternative, as it has great perks that are more noticeable compared to what I have, but it's also very easy to get via Banshee or Zer when available. This to me is a simple yet elegant build that allows players to play how they want. The following will make sure our exotic armor is not only active when you need it most, but also make sure you don't need to rely solely on additional weapon perks or mods to achieve its overall goal. I stated I want to make sure the build can rely on a super and prismatic form to keep our melee charge going for as long as possible. And while I could have added a certain perk to boost my melee charge rate a bit more, achieving the main goal of fast and active prismatic form is 100% what I needed in the first place, and it has become part of the end game goal of the build. Using our connect primary and faster grace, we are able to use our melee more often, but also being able to retain a free charge melee after our prismatic form is done and over with. Ultimately, this is what we want and actually need, as we won't be using our melee back to back, but rather using it cautiously, so we can maintain its usage for longer. At the same time, pocket this effect will also grant us melee energy as well, so as long as we keep getting kills, as mentioned via our connect weapon, we should overall be good with the melee regen effect since our super will be, naturally, regaining through standard gameplay. And quite honestly, this is an exotic that people will sleep on just because they think this won't work in endgame environments. The truth is, the exotic and many other melee based exotics can work in any environments with prismatic as long as you focus the vast amount of your energy towards Prismatic and Fragments itself. The Facet of Grace is the ideal fragment to have if you ever want to use these type of builds, as it can quickly reduce the time needed to activate your Prismatic form when needed, and this will then affect your ability going forward. This, along with your Kinect of Choice, means if you want to use MIDI more often in game, then this right here is the right method to do so. No exotics, just this. The only thing you have to worry about is what to do when you don't have Prismatic Form available, as outside of that, you will then need to include certain perks to help out. But except from the small issue, this build does fairly well in endgame and master content, as it's always sustaining one key feature, without the need of investing heavily into the stats. So use this guide to build up what you have learned today, and go give this build a try while you're at it. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. 
The dim for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more additional content. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.